Hello, welcome to City Show. I'm your host, Dr. Tom Krieger. Today, we've taken our show on the road for a couple of reasons. First, we're, uh, we're gonna take a short ride over to Franklin and look at a real gem. It's the Museum of Spiritual Art. It's a vision of Ramesh Malhotra, an immigrant from India who's putting his wealth uh, that he's earned over a lifetime behind numerous artistic projects in Warren County. Uh, this place blew my mind. I think it's gonna blow your mind as well. But up first, uh, we're going to be talking with City Manager Scott Brunka, who's joined me today to take a look around uh, our hometown at the changes that will take place over the next few months. Uh, you may have noticed uh, a few of the bulldozers that are out there and all the dirt being moved around. Uh, these are city projects in the works on South Broadway, on Mulberry Street, uh, at the bridge over Turtle Creek by the train station, and on North Broadway near the, play, near the fairgrounds. Uh, there's also a private housing development about to break ground on North Broadway in front of the school bus garage. Uh, Scott, it sounds like uh, you're going to have a busy summer. There is a lot going on, as our city engineer likes to remind me, so yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, first of all, just r real quick, you've been in this position for two years. Yeah, al almost two years. Yeah. I've uh, worked for the city of Lebanon for 18 years now, yeah. so uh, moved up here in 2001 and wow. just have enjoyed the job and yeah. have enjoyed the community, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you're, you're doing a great job and you're Thank really you. involved too. You seem to be yeah. involved in all the different stuff and, and have your hand on it uh, right. in, in a great way. And I think that, that allows you to probably, probably do a, 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 <clears throat> the great job that you do. Yeah, that's been part of my enjoyment is yeah. just the civic organizations that are yeah. in Lebanon and, and getting to be a part of some of those. So, yeah. Hey, let, let's start on the South Broadway construction. This this project started in 2018 Yes. Uh, and is much more than a simple resurfacing. Uh, what's being done on this portion of Broadway? So there's a lot of utility work uh, that's really been um, being completed up to this point. So it includes a water main replacement. It includes... Um, you know, portions of the sewer main getting uh, replaced, storm sewer installation. So a lot of the work through this winter has really focused on the underground utility yeah. work and we're getting ready to transition into the complete road reconstruction part of it. So new concrete curbs, new asphalt, um, you know, the things above ground that typically go a lot quicker than yeah. all the underground work. Oh, it's funny, I remember that movie, uh, Milk Money. Yes. Uh, and, and that was the road that led to Cincinnati, it looked yes. like all of a sudden you went <laughs> over, and uh, so this is a main artery into our city. It is uh, not directly from Cincinnati, it like the movie portrayed. It is. Uh, does does that uh, pose any challenges? And, and as far as uh, when, when is this whole thing going to be done? Yeah, I mean, in terms of challenges, luckily uh, we've got a pretty good road network downtown, okay. so it's been pretty easy to to close it and still um, route traffic around. The right now it looks like they're going to be complete in May. Uh, so we've nice. got a couple more months and then hopefully we'll get things wrapped up. Okay, okay. And, and, and right now we're, we're definitely enjoying some beautiful signs of yes. spring. Yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. the birds are chirping. Uh, we're seeing all those orange cones uh, pop up all right, over the area. Right, right. Uh, so the fact that the weather is nice, because uh, when, when the rain and all that other stuff, that's got to be yeah. a hindrance. Uh, it, and getting the work done. It is. They've been able to get quite a bit of work done okay. through the winter because it's all been underground. So okay. we tried to time the project where a lot of the underground work gets completed and then once the asphalt plants open up in April, we're ready to really get working on the road part of it. Okay. Let's move to 200 South Broadway, the yes. uh, Channel Restoration Park Project. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's another one right there. <laughs> uh, when, when did this project become necessary? Oh, so we, over the last couple years, as you kind of went by the yeah. property there, uh, which was the old open options building, starting, uh, starting you would notice the, uh, the parking lot settle more and more yeah. and holes develop. Um, we obviously took note of it um, and started looking into the situation just from okay. a public safety standpoint because yeah, yeah. it was starting to get close to the sidewalk. Uh, so we um, evaluated the situation and what was happening is there was a, it's, uh, about a 15 foot high metal retaining wall yeah. um, that had been constructed to hold that whole embankment along Total Creek there um, when the property was originally built in the 1950s. Wow. Well, that retaining wall was failing. Okay. So it was rusting out and failing and actually the water was getting behind okay. um, the uh, retaining wall and starting to erode the embankment. Yeah. So you were seeing slippage and failure uh, in the parking lot, which ultimately would have threatened the building itself yeah. if it had continued. So. Um, we identified it as a problem, um, reached out, talked to the property owners about a resolution. Uh, it, 
really the, the fix or the replacement of the failing retaining wall would have cost more than the property was worth yeah. is kind of what it boiled down to. Uh, so we decided at that point with the property owner to pursue a grant uh, okay. to try to acquire the property wow. and really convert it into uh, a pocket park, remove the retaining yeah. wall, uh, reestablish what the natural grade of that uh, area was before it was built. and. Uh, Luckily, we were successful. Hey, they must have been extremely relieved. I think they that, were. They, that it had to be a, a nightmare it, for them. It really oh, worked out well. They were able to acquire another uh, yeah. building right in downtown yes. Lebanon yeah. uh, to continue their operations, and it really um, helped them get out of that situation. So, do you have a, a grant writing team to, to find that out, or do you have to go out and find a grant writing team? How'd no, you... we, we do it ourselves. Okay. So, it's really a, a mix of folks that'll yeah. write grants, I'll write grants, our city engineer, our uh, parks person. So. Uh, we have multiple people on staff who put together these grants and okay. uh, and pursue funding. I, I saw some plans for that. I'm sure we'll probably get some plans uh, up right. on the screen there. Uh, uh, this project, uh, what's the date for this to be done? Well, we had hoped, actually, we had hoped that it'd be done by now. So okay. anytime you're working in a major stream like uh, Turtle Creek, um, you have to get permits through the Army Corps of Engineers, yeah. through the Ohio EPA. So that took a little bit longer than we had anticipated. But at this point, um, the actual excavation work and the creek channel yeah. realignment and all that should be done by mid-April. And then uh, we'll transition into the park, which you see a, a photo of there. Uh, we'll be transitioning into uh, the actual park development wow. later this spring, which will really be kind of simple. It'll be yeah. a nice brick walkway with some landscaping. Uh, we Man. think it'll be a really attractive uh, gateway feature as yeah. you're coming into yeah. downtown Lebanon a place for the users of the train to enjoy. Uh, so we're super excited about it. Turn them lemons into lemonade. Yeah, right? it's a, yeah. yes. Uh, from a nightmare to a, another dream park. Yes, yeah. I think it definitely is gonna work out well. So on projects like this, you being an engineer, mm -hmm. uh, I, I can see you putting a helmet and just getting right down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I was pretty involved in I, this I hear one. your enthusiasm <laughs> as you're talking right. about this. So your background yes. has to really pay off with things like this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was something that, um, you know, I was, I was excited to kind of yeah. be able to um, take something that was a, a public safety issue and kind yeah. of a hazard and turn it into an asset. And, and we were able to do that through a state of Ohio grant. So we wow. would not have been able to do this project without getting the funding uh, from the state of Ohio to actually uh, acquire the property, remove the building, yeah. and then do the uh, creek channel uh, work that needed to be done wow. and, and get it fixed. So That's gonna be a beautiful showcase. Uh, let's move to Mulberry Street. Uh, so we're, we're on uh, Lebanon's Party Street, yep. uh, Mulberry, and uh, changes are coming to this street to, to make the fest it more festival friendly. Uh, what's going to be happening there? So really, you're going to see it transform into uh, some brick enhancements. So yeah. the, the entire street is not going to be brick. Um, okay. There's going to be enhancements uh, along East Mulberry from Broadway all the way up to Cherry Street uh, to really highlight the intersections, you know, highlight the street itself. Um, a big part of this project will be uh, the installation of a temporary baller system. So okay. one question I get asked all the time is, is East Mulberry going to be closed down permanently? No, it is not. Um, it's still only going to be closed for festivals and for events. Um, but we're putting in a system where our crews can easily install yeah. uh, metal crash proof uh, ballers yeah. to, to safely and securely uh, kind of cut off or close off these areas to vehicles. Um, that's been a concern that our police department's raised uh, over the last few years just with um, these festivals and the events is making sure we're providing a safe space uh, for folks to congregate. So okay. uh, the project includes that. Uh, we're looking at a gateway feature that'll kind of um, mark and identify yeah. the area yeah. as, you know, Lebanon's festival area. Um, so it's just really going to, I think, visually be a nice enhancement. Uh, the city, in terms of funding, is being funded through the racetrack redevelopment okay. funds that were provided by the state of Ohio. The garbage as well. trucks did the job, but they weren't as attractive. Yeah, as so the, we got a little yeah. bit of uh, feedback. You know, what we had been trying to do in the meantime is, uh, you know, park some of our older trucks yeah. <laughs> across the road, which was, wasn't quite as attractive was, as what this will be. But it, yeah, yeah. it's functional. And, and we've done a lot already. I, I see with the bump outs and, and yes. the, the seating for uh, some of the, the restaurants, uh, yes. docks, and a new uh, the new pizzeria. Uh, Bellagio's has one, yeah, yes. Yeah, so beautiful. 
Yeah, those continue to be popular. We're getting other businesses yeah. that are uh, asking the city about doing it. Almost them. has a European feel. Right. Yeah, so so where where did you get these ideas to do this? I mean, actually, Main Street Lebanon yeah. came to the city okay. um, as an organization originally to kind of pitch the idea of the bump out. So okay. it really wasn't even uh, wasn't the city's idea, um, but some of the business owners had expressed interest nice. to the Main Street Lebanon organization. Yeah. So we worked with them to yeah. uh, identify locations where it made sense. And, and when's the projects going to be done? We have our first uh, festivals coming up. Uh, Early June. Okay. Yeah. So, so going to be ready by then? Completion date is mid-May. So wow. absolutely. That was one of the things we made sure is that the project uh, would be done before yeah. Lebanon festival season. Is there going to be a big kickoff for the very first one? To uh, you know, we haven't we haven't planned for yeah. it. I'm sure we'll do some yeah. sort of uh, a, opening a ceremony. A right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But we haven't, we haven't pinned that down yet. Wow. That's excellent. Uh, now let's move to the proposed fire station location. Right. Uh, this used to be county property. It's up by the fairgrounds? Correct. Uh, how did the city acquire this land? So we, we uh, conducted a fire facility study uh, about a year ago. So when we first started looking at the need and trying to determine um, what our best options are in the future in terms yeah. of providing a fire station, uh, we had a consultant come in and look at um, the adequacy of our existing fire station, but then also identify potential locations for a new fire station uh, that would best serve the community. You know, we didn't want to just say, well, let's go put, put it here yeah. and not, you know, be able to provide adequate response time. Okay. So as part of that assessment, uh, they came back and identified a few locations along that North Broadway corridor that would be ideal uh, okay. for a new fire station. Um, they also certainly identified that uh, investing in the existing fire station really wasn't a good use of money, yeah. that it had served its purpose. Um, so one of, the, one of the locations was in that Warren County Fairgrounds okay. area. Uh, so we approached the county about carving off about six acres of fairgrounds property. It's really the, the area where there's uh, kind of an old white farmhouse. So it's not part of what they use for the fair or for... Uh, some of the other events. Um, it had kind of been an underutilized portion of the property and we approached them about purchasing it for yeah. the fire station and we were able to work with them thankfully and, and negotiate a sale. And a levy helped uh, with yeah, that. Yeah and certainly our, our ability that. to actually yeah. construct uh, a new fire station was completely yeah. dependent on passage of the levy last fall and, and thankfully that occurred. So, so does that suggest there's going to be more growth of our town out that way as well? I, you're seeing some trends there. Yeah. I think we'll probably be talking about the, the mixed use uh, development on 511 North Broadway. And, you know, Warren County is moving forward with the construction of an event center on the fairground. So you're seeing a wow. lot of investment, yeah. both public and private, along yeah. that corridor. Wow. That's beautiful. What stage is the fire station project at, at this point? Right now, we're getting ready to move into the engineering design phase okay. later this year. Um, so I think the thought is kind of get into designing the facility okay. later this year into next year and then look at starting construction at some point next year. Um, like I said, we didn't want to get too far ahead of it. We yeah. wanted to make sure from a, a funding standpoint that we actually had the resources in place to construct it. So, so what goes into that design project and, and what do you what do you look into uh, then obviously the number of uh, areas for the trucks yeah uh, so the the number of the number of the vehicle bays, bays the yeah. space for our officers to um, you know be able to stay there overnight yeah. uh, looking at kind of training needs within the facility uh, so the chief and I have been going and looking at a few other newer fire stations okay. just to kind of get some best practice ideas. Want to make sure it's state of the art. Right. So Ten years from now, you're not. Yeah, you gotta, we, we got to yeah. do it again. And and you know yeah. that's part of our challenge with the the existing station yeah. 41 on West Silver Street is we're really boxed in. Uh, um, on all sides. So we can't expand that building. Yeah. Um, and we definitely wanted to secure a piece of property that would allow us in the future to grow if we so needed. So do you keep the existing one? Is there still a right need now, for that? Right um, now, city council's intent would be to sell that property. Okay. So once we vacated it and the, yeah. are occupying the new fire station, uh, the plan is to to vacate that uh, building. Um, that building was originally constructed in the 1950s as a wow. laundromat. Oh my goodness! Uh, so it was bought, I think, in the mid 80s yeah. by the city and converted into our fire station. Uh, at that time, we were an all volunteer yeah. fire station. Wow. It was really not set up to be 24/7, uh, you know, type operation yeah. that we are today. So. 
we definitely got a lot of value out of it yeah. over the years, but it had kind of reached the end of its useful life. Was that life. part of the levy too, as far as bringing in uh, more fire firefighters too? Is that a this, portion of that? Uh, yeah, to be yeah. able to sustain that. So yeah. we received a $1 million federal SAFER grant to hire yeah. uh, three, uh, hire three full-time uh, firefighters to kind of keep them on staff. Um, and that's great. We got the grant, yeah. but then we've got to be able to sustain the, those personnel costs after the grant expires. Okay. So the levy helps us maintain what our current staffing levels are uh, in the fire department, which right now it's a mix of full-time and part-time staff. Okay. We're, we're still uh, really 50% part-time when it yeah. comes to our fire and EMS services. Um, but this kind of gives us a little bit more stability. Yeah, you ne never think about how important that is until your house is burning. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's I, I, that's one thing. The community has been very supportive of yeah. not only our fire, but our police and our public safety services. Hey, there, there's there's a lot of land up there. Mm -hmm. uh, are, are they going to use some of that land for something else? There's enough. One of the thoughts is, and this is certainly on down the road, um, but at some point, if the city needs to replace our police department, okay. that we could co-locate our police operations on that property. So nice. um, when we identified how much land we thought we needed, we made sure to account for the potential for that okay. in the future. There's no concrete plans right now to actually do it. But like I said, we did not want to get boxed in. Um, you know, in terms of not being able to expand our facilities as the community yeah. grows. Well, that would make sense because, I, I mean, the police department, they're right across the street. Right. <laughs> What's the history on that building? Did, did it you know, that's a good a, question. I'm not sure when that was built. It's definitely been remodeled. Was, was it a laundromat? <laughs> I don't think it was a laundromat. I'm sure it was something, but uh, it's been remodeled extensively. They're using every corner yeah, of that building yeah, <laughs> right yeah. now. Um, but, you know, for now, you know, we're, they're going to stay there. Okay. Uh, but I would say if you look at our facility needs long term, that's probably up there in terms of future wow. needs. Uh, let's move to 511 North Broadway. This is the site uh, of the city's old maintenance garage and yes. a, an exciting new projects planned for this property. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. So uh, we earlier this year went out uh, or actually last year went out and issued a request for qualifications for redevelopment of that property. It's six acres, the yeah. city owns the land. Like you said, it used to be our public works facility. And um, we really wanted to kind of see that property go into active use yeah. uh, and add value to our downtown district. So we went out, issued a request for qualifications and uh, we got uh, a, a good submittal from CMC Properties uh, as a developer to construct a mixed use development on that site. So it's anywhere from a 15 to $20 million investment, kind of okay. depending on where it ends up. Uh, but it'll consist of kind of restaurant, commercial properties yeah. along the front of North Broadway, and then residential uh, property or residential buildings behind that in the form of apartments and townhomes. Okay, okay. And what kind of housing is gonna be available there? So it'll be market rate um, housing rent. You know the um, lease rates are anywhere from eleven $1 hundred to fourteen hundred dollars a month, depending on the number okay. of bedrooms that are in the in the units. Um, he uh, he's done several of these projects successfully in other communities. So uh, you know what he's looking to attract are really two types of people. You've got yeah. the millennials yeah. um, that are looking for that type of housing uh, and want to live downtown. Want, okay. They like that walkability. And then you've got the folks that are downsizing and they want to, you know, kind of do away with the responsibilities of home maintenance. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and again, they like the idea of kind of living in downtown, having access to everything we have to offer in a kind of a walkable environment. So he, uh, you know, Mr. Cohen's a developer. Yeah. He has been looking in Lebanon for probably three plus years for an opportunity to do this type of uh, product or this type of development. And, um, you know, has the opportunity through through this project. Now, these are going to be all rental properties. They None will of them be. Are going to be purchasable. No, it's okay. all. I mean, it, it's really a you know more urban dense okay. development. So it's uh, it's definitely rental properties, yeah. um, but it's market rate, um, nice housing. Um, he's done a similar project in downtown Loveland, okay. uh, Milford, and Hamilton, and uh, this will be his next one. Okay, well he's done a good job in Loveland, that's, uh, yes, yeah, that's, the, that's beautiful. Yes, yeah, the one downtown yeah. is- Right by the bike, bike exactly. trail Exactly, that's yeah. his project. Um, and you know, part of it is also adding some new, you know, restaurant, um, potentially retail, but I think yeah. he's geared more towards the restaurant side okay. of things for, okay. for our residents to enjoy. So it's gonna maintain the old feel, but yet bring on some right. new stuff for the, 
younger people and make make our town chic but not not lose yeah i mean yeah. it's um i mean he definitely uh is tying into that look and feel of nice. downtown lebanon uh architecturally um he um you know wants us to connect the streetscape up there yeah. so that folks that are living there still feel like they're part of downtown well that's exciting now when, when are they going to start moving the dirt around there he ho the plan right now is this summer yeah. so there are okay. several contingencies uh the city has approved a development agreement with him uh, but there are several contingencies within that agreement agreement okay. uh, that are kind of being worked through right now um, but um, he just met with him this morning wow. and he's still he's shooting for this summer to actually okay. break ground and uh, he figures it'll be about a year um, after that before you know things will be to the point where he can start kind of renting it out and, okay. and they'll be uh, be able to be occupied so 2020 the, 2020, the fall perhaps that's that's the goal okay. absolutely okay. that's the goal wow and, and how many how many people are going to be there's about a total of a little over 100 units. Okay. Um, so, um, and part of that's um, one bedroom. He's got a couple two bedroom, okay. not many three bedroom. He's really more and of And they're the, going to have parking as well. So there'll so be, yeah, parking there'll unit. be parking. Okay. And then right now he's looking at, um, you know, three uh, commercial uh, tenant spaces for restaurants that'll be along the front. So how, how, can, how can our citizens continue to keep abreast of all these changes? Is there any... Yeah, Any I way think to keep them informed because I, I know people like to know what's going right, on in our town and right. they like to be involved. And right. Any so thoughts on that? I mean, a couple things. Um, you know, certainly the city's website has information out there. Okay. We have a Facebook page where we're trying to put it, push information out. Um, a lot of these decisions are getting made at city council meetings. Okay. Those are public meetings, uh, the second and fourth Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. Yeah. Um, and you can always watch uh, watch the council meetings on okay. Channel 6 on our website. So we Excellent. do live streaming uh, of the meetings on our website. Um, and then they're also archived, so you can pull them up. Um, the other thing I would suggest is, um, you know, getting involved in the civic groups that, are, that yeah. are in this community. So I know myself and others, we regularly go out to the Chamber of Commerce, to Main Street Lebanon, yeah. And talk about these yeah. projects to their members, yeah. um, and it's a great way to kind of to hear about it and, and have a discussion about it. Um, we are revamping our website this year, and one of the features is going to be uh, folks can sign up, give us their email address, and then we will periodically put out information via email nice. about projects and things yeah. going on in the city. And that's really a capability we don't have right yeah. now that we want to have is a little bit more direct communication yeah. with our residents to keep them updated. It's almost like you have to have someone just doing social media stuff. Right, right. Uh, do you right. have someone on staff doing that or is we, that another hat that you wear? No, I do not wear that. Yeah. We do have somebody who okay. handles that. Um, but you know, with social media and the platform, there's kind of only so much you can yeah. put out there. Um, we very much want to kind of get be able to communicate in a little bit more detail through email and, and some of these other capabilities yeah. on these projects. So the new website will be up and running by the end of this year. And uh, I'm gonna, we're definitely going to promote, okay. hey, sign up, get your name, email it so we can kind of stay in contact. Um, without having a regular newspaper covering Lebanon, yeah. it is a little bit more difficult to, to make sure information is getting pushed out there. Good information yeah. is getting pushed out there. And this, this has been a busy year for you. Yes. How, yeah. do, you, how do you top this? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, there's a take, lot of exciting. You take exciting. a vacation yeah. for a while and then come back? <laughs> yeah. And... I mean, it's just there's a lot of exciting yeah. projects going on. Um, you know, we didn't even kind of get into the Golden Lamb and the expansion of the Black yeah. Horse Tavern that they're doing. Um, so there's just a lot of uh, a lot of fun projects that are happening, and we really want to kind of keep that momentum going. Yeah. And, and on, on the Golden Lamb, when are they looking at wrapping that up? Uh, it's they're a putting spring. A, a patio. Yeah, they're doing like there. an outdoor dining yeah. veranda. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, yeah. It'll be a very nice, huge investment, okay. and they're going to be open uh, this spring. So. And that that is a draw. For our city. Absolutely. That, that just definitely brings uh, brings people out. Yeah. Is there anything else that we missed that you'd like to share with our, our viewers out there? You know, I think you covered a lot of the big yeah. ones. Um, in terms of road projects, um, we are going to be starting Walnut Street, okay. and that's a complete reconstruction. Uh, later this year, we'll be doing Monroe Road and Dave Avenue. So okay. um, we are making over five million dollars in investments in our road infrastructure this year. So. I know uh, yeah. we get the pothole complaints and yeah. a lot of folks are concerned about road conditions and I can tell you that you know we're making some significant investments in our road improvement road maintenance programs this yeah. year to work off the backlog. Wow. If if you haven't been in these festivals uh the, the uh 
is it the third Friday? Third Friday, and yeah, Boy, June, it, July, it, and it's, August. It's yes. just spectacular. I mean, we right. really have uh, like a European type feel. I mean, our, mm -hmm. our town is so amazing. So I want to challenge you, if you haven't been out, uh, get out. It's safe. Yes. Uh, it's fun. Uh, it's great entertainment. It, it's it's Lebanon. Yeah. Yeah. Scott, yeah. thanks. Uh, thanks right, for thank being you. with us today. Uh, we'll be in Franklin at the Museum of Spiritual Art when we return. So don't go away. Break your fast food habit at Kelly's Meats and Deli at 1001 West Main Street in Lebanon. Stop in for a quick lunch featuring made-to-order sandwiches, tasty sides, and mouth-watering daily specials. For dinner, Kelly's offers fresh-cut steaks, chops, and seafood, plus a variety of prepared dishes that only need to be reheated. You'll also find a large selection of high-quality wine and beer that can make any meal a special event. Kelly's Meats and Deli, open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday. Now open for dinner Saturday, 6 to 9 p.m. And remember, we cater to... All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. Have a shoulder problem? That's pretty common. The shoulder is a complex, four different joints, 28 different muscles, which requires a unique approach, which is what we do. Chiropractic adjustments to the joint, clinical massage to the tissue, and therapeutic exercise to help re-educate and strengthen that area. If you're looking for great care for a shoulder problem, call our office at 933-9799 to schedule your free assessment of your shoulder problem. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back. If you're not sitting down, I, I think you should because you're about to get knocked off your feet. We're at the Museum of Spiritual Art in Franklin, Ohio, and this place is incredible. It's, it's magical. Thank I mean, you. I just, I walked in before you got here yeah. and I just, I'm tingling. Uh, this is my new friend, Ramesh. Yes. Uh, and, and this is his vision. Uh, and it's it's truly incredible. I mean, Thank I'm you. just yeah. I'm touched and moved. Now, uh, you came to America, yes, uh, from India. That's right. H how long ago? That will be in 1968. 1968. Okay, yes. and you're you're a geologist. That's right. And uh, you work specifically with coal. I, that, that's how I started my business okay. side. Okay. Life was coal. Yes. And, and that's that's how you became successful enough to to fund. That's right. This, to be able yeah. to share this with people? Very true. Yeah. How, how did you discover this passion for this art? Uh, it started off was uh, in 1995. Okay. Uh, I just started to have uh, uh, some inner awakening. Yeah. Where I start to become a patron of art. So start supporting the artist paying them money to yeah. paint. Okay. David Mueller was one, okay. and I have done with many others. That led to more, and then I met uh, Chuck Marshall. Okay. He, has, he was a landscape painter. I asked him to work with me and build a, a collection of uh, paintings about the spirituality. Yeah. He didn't know what I'm talking about. So you extended his boundaries. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and, uh, and he painted all the religions, essentially. Wow. And they are here. There's about, I think, I don't know. I don't even know how many, yeah. many paintings. Wow. And uh, then many other artists have come along. Okay. And uh, so every year I sponsor the artist. Uh, we had a exhibition of Mother Teresa yeah. two years ago, where about, I think, 10 artists from the worldwide 
they each painted Mother Teresa's oh, wow. in their own mind, how they see it. Yeah. And we had the exhibition. Then early this year, or last year, I met young girl, she's Jewish, she's very good, but she was going through a little difficult time. Yeah. Her husband has lost a job. At that time, it came to my mind, maybe I should build another series like Mother Teresa. Yeah. And somehow it came into my mind, Martin Luther King okay. Jr. So I hired her. I'm paying her every month each yeah. painting. Yeah. And then essentially we'll build up a, a collection of Martin Luther King. So you, you commission the artist. Yeah. Uh, you I kind of let them know what, you, do you give them an idea of what you want? I just tell them the theme. Okay. Uh, first time was like Mother Teresa. It was, she touched my soul yeah. when I met her first oh time in You in met the, her? Yeah. Wow. I touched her feet and I was blessed. And then that changed a lot. Okay. So first exhibition was done with Mother Teresa. That has gone to a location at various church have, are taking it to rotation, yeah. exhibition or rotation. Second, I'm looking at Martin Luther King and having his exhibition yeah. travel. Basically, they stay in this place for about a year or so. Okay. After that, they become a traveling exhibition. Okay. And so the uh, people can come to the museum, but the museum can go to the people. Yeah, nice. And that's why we are trying to taking each faith at a time. Yeah. Like I have been requested, the next one after Martin Luther King is uh, Mandela. Okay. That he changed the life in Africa. So I do not know when I will start that. Yeah, nice. Back to when you first came into the country. That was 68? Yes, right. Did you experience any hardships or challenges, or was it pretty uh, a pretty smooth transition for you? Well, I was like a fish out of the water, yeah. and uh, so I was fumbling like back okay. and forth. Yeah. But I must say that what I am today, it would not be if it was not for people of the United States. Yeah. They gave me the chance, they gave me the opportunity, I came with less than $35, $45, somewhere around that. I don't remember exactly. But I have never taken any money from India or from anywhere. All the money has come from the American people. Yeah. So I feel it is my obligation to pay it back. Yeah. Similarly, I'm doing in India, I'm building a school oh my goodness. to the children. So I just want to do is before I die, yeah. use my success yeah. to leave a legacy behind and pay back to both the countries, India, where it gave me the birth, yeah. and America, that gave me the opportunity. Wow. I, I mean, just the, the building itself, this, this uh, museum, is, is spectacular. And then the artwork, I can only imagine like, the cost. Uh, so do you have donors as well that, that assist, or is this all I is this all, all I you? paid. Wow. I all paid for it. We just get some $5 or so. Yeah. Uh, people donation, no, not yeah. even much donation, just five dollars come in. Uh, no, I have to fund everything out of my own pocket. I have a little over half a million dollar worth of artwork yeah. that I have commissioned. I love and this I have, guy. This is, <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, he's, you've embodied the American dream, except you haven't, you haven't uh, been tainted by uh, what some people might call, <laughs> including myself, the corruption and greed. <laughs> you're given, you're giving it back. Yeah to touch lives that's and enlighten right. them to see something that's beyond and bigger. Yeah. Uh, no, than, it's not beyond and bigger. It is in you. It's in them. Yeah. That's Your great. living spirit is yeah. in you. Well, I'm trying to awaken that. Awaken it. That's beautiful. If that's I awaken beautiful. it, you don't have to depend on the sunlight. Yeah. You will have your own light. Yeah. Wow. Even at night, yeah. you don't have to worry about it. Wow. That is what it is. Yeah. It is getting your inner spirit lighten up. That's okay. what they call enlightenment. Yes. And you see people like uh, Buddha yeah. or Christ, when they show them, they always show a halo around them. Yeah. That is what saying is, this soul has been awakened yeah. and living on an inner life, inner spirit, yeah. not the outside light. Wow. That is, that is so like beautiful. if you look at their uh, picture of uh, Guru Nanak, he has a halo behind it. Yeah. And that is what it is. Even when you look up here, even though halo is not there, 
when the artist was I, painting. When I walked in, th this this is the first picture that sure. grabbed me. And for me, as a Christian, Christian, yeah, I, I almost fell to my knees. Well, uh, you know, it, before this 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 picture. The this main is, the main purpose of this one was because I have seen many pictures of Christ on the yeah. on the cross. Yeah. But when you read about Christ, and it said he was beaten up, he was all this. Yeah. But every time you see a picture of Christ, it is like as if yeah. nothing has happened to him. Yeah. So when I worked with uh, Chuck Marshall, we talked about it to show picture of Christ yeah. in truth. Where he was beaten up, look at his eyes and everything. And his nails were put into the bones. But to show that, he was the son of the God. Yeah. The two hands yeah. are coming to pick him up. Yeah. So that's what this is the only place you'll see the God's hands coming in to lift up his own son. Yes, that's, that's powerful. That is, that is what it is. There, there's so much power and beauty in this place. We're, we're, we're gonna take you on a tour uh, and, and, and look at some of the other okay, rooms sure. and some of the other art too. Sure, let's, okay. let's head over this way. Sure. Yeah is more trying to show the Jewish faith, okay? This Jewish faith was is, yeah. here's a rabbi, and this is where he's reading the Torah. The most beautiful part is there is a star of David right behind yeah. him. That is spectacular. Plus, at the same time, when he's reading it, his eyes and the face, it, what I, when I commissioned this one, my wife is Jewish. Yes. So I gave her the present, original present to her. Oh my. The interesting part is she laughed. She said, on Christmas, you're giving me a present of a rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> she said, do you know what you're doing? Oh. I said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had, she want to show you this oh. or the other face. This is the picture you look. It's the... Moses. Moses. Yes. This guy is a living person in Mason who rides on a bicycle, very spiritual. So when Chuck got the one, I wanted him to pay, uh, paint the Moses for the Jewish faith, he caught, got him and he became very good friends with him. You'll see him in a couple of paintings here. But he is, to me, whenever I see him on the yeah. street, he is like Moses. Oh my goodness. He just walked. Watch in. for this guy in Mason. Yes, yes. You could walk. So does up. he get? Does he get a lot of that? Hey, no, Moses. Bruce. No. No. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> but he joking. just. Yeah. No. He's just like there. Then the. This is the another thing wow. is what I found. I was traveling. I travel. Whenever I travel, I look for artwork which yeah. is related to faith. These three paintings, which you see over there, I found them in Israel, and the artist had painted them and he was selling them as a one piece at a time and everything else. When I went there, I said, no, 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 no. What have you painted in these two, three paintings? He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know, I just paint, you know, I, I just painted it. I said, do you know what you have done is you have captured nice. the faith, yeah. Jewish faith, yeah. because if you look at the first one, you see the person, he's reading the Torah, but his face expresses He's questioning, is it really true? Yeah. And the second one has now learned his inner spirit has been awoken. And he starts to read the book. Look, his glasses are up there. He is so focused and he no longer have any question. Yeah. But he is now seeing his wah. Okay. And the third, he's an old man. He's teaching. He's teaching. So the wow. in life one is you learn. You experience, yeah. and then you teach. I said, you did this thing. This is the most important thing. We didn't part. rehearse that. No, I no, got that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> it good. is the way it is. And that's what I, every time is, I do something, it's like the same. Like this painting is, I got it from artists from also Israel, yeah. which he took the newspaper of the old time during the war, yeah. and then he painted on the newspaper, and Rabbi is talking nice. to the lady. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned before uh, the picture of Jesus. You, you commissioned that mm -hmm. person, and, and you went to Israel, yeah. and, and, and you, you purchased these. Yes. Now you have people from all over the world contacting you 
and, and, and then you, you commission them. So you yes. have artists oh, from I all have over the world. Canada. I have uh, from uh, France, two of France. I have it from uh, India. I have it from Australia. I have uh, it from USA. I travel, I find something. Yeah. Every, I show you one thing which was amazing. This painting is the painting of Rabbi, okay? I went to an uh, antique store. Yeah. In the antique store, I found out that Spiegel was a very famous artist who only painted uh, clowns. Yeah. But this was in the antique shop, sitting there, and I said, well, I need to have, he said, why are you so special about this? It's not color, nothing, not clown. I said, you don't realize, he was Jewish, wow. Spiegel, and he painted rabbi, yeah. black and white, yeah. and there is no other painting by him of a rabbi. Oh my. That yeah. one, I know. And you found this in an I antique shop? I found in an antique shop. Wow. I found several I'm going to look a little closer now <laughs> when I go antique. <laughs> yeah. 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 It goodness. is amazing. People have just given it away. They yeah. have no idea. But it is a history. Wow. And it's a history. To me, this is the most beautiful piece you could have for a person who paints cartoons. Yeah. Uh, not cartoon, but the um, clowns. Yeah. But he, because of his faith, he did paint, yeah. and, but it was never recognized by anyone. It was in the antique shop for nothing. Now, you, you mentioned earlier, we came from the room with uh, the Christianity, we had mm -hmm. Martin Luther King, we had Jesus, now we're in the, the tribute to, to he Hebrews and Jewish. Yes, yes. Uh, your wife he, is Jewish. Jewish. Yeah. Uh, how about yourself? Are, are you on a spiritual quest yourself? And where, where would you say you're at? or? How would I you am, identify yourself? I am, I am basically saying is just like electricity or yeah. just like water. Yeah. I would say more like water. Water you could put in there, uh, the, um, say, liquor. Yeah. Then it becomes scotch, you drink scotch. Yeah. But sometimes you put orange juice with the water. But you drink all the time, but you're drinking like it is your favorite drink. Okay. But if faith is the same way, it is your favorite faith, but underlying it is all water. Yeah. And I am trying to be a water, not a drink. Yeah. I don't, doesn't matter I drink Coca-Cola, whether I drink scotch, yeah. whether I always look at it, I am drinking water. Yeah. And that is the, so in my faith is look for foundation. Yeah. When I look at like a river, mm. people see as a river and water, and I look at is this there's a God in there. Yeah. He's the one who created it. So I'm just go one step beyond. Yeah. Because that is what I want to be. That's what is my faith. That my faith is absolute truth, ultimate truth. Yeah. If I could find that and capture it, I reached it. Yeah. So you've kind of come from being a geologist and come into a calling. Yes, to help it is my calling. Lead other people That's right. to their journey That's right. of discovering yeah. what's, it is my what's inside of them. That's right. what, a, what a great way to do it with all this beautiful it's art. Let's go look at some more it's and okay. explore some other rooms. Sure. Come on with us. So now we're in a room that uh, is all about the Hindu faith. It's a okay. Sikh. A Sikh. It's, a Sikh. it's an offshoot of Hinduism. Yeah. Okay. And this Sikh faith is actually very similar to the faith called Zoroastrian. Okay. They were the faith in Persia. They, before uh, Muhammad, and so, but they practiced. So this is, took the teachings on both sides. On now this, you mentioned something about the turban yes. and the beard and yeah. how the Sikh faith, it's a Sikh faith brings both Muslims yeah. and Hindus into one. Okay, can we can we look at this and see yeah. how that illustrates? Does that that's, illustrate yeah, that? Yeah, that's illustrate. The, on the top, the turban is a Hindu faith-wise. Muslims have big beard. They put it together. They're worshiping there to a Hindu temple. This, but in, in this whole thing, faith was created was to fight against the Britishers. Yeah. And that is why Britishers never ever won the mm -hmm. war against the Sikh, yeah. as long as they ruled. Yeah. Wow. But they were the very most powerful people. They had the ultimate faith. Yeah. 
and that is where and they basically worship the book holy book okay Okay. And they don't have any idol, nothing. Okay. And that's why he changed. And this is an illustration of their temple? That's right. That's the temple. Is Everybody goes there. And where, where is that? That's in Amritsar in India. Okay. It's interesting is that this, when Chuck Marshall uh, was painting this, I had no idea I was in India. Yeah. So one of the Indian priests took me inside. And when I came out, I called Chuck. Wow. I said, Chuck, you'll never believe I went to the temple holy temple and somebody took me to right next to the holy bible so book. did you did you send him down here to, no, to get no. this or did he get a picture but you of it know then? he had seen the picture okay. that told him to do something oh my he said ramesh you'll never believe me yeah. i said what he said i just finished painting the temple wow i said what <laughs> and he says ramesh is giving me a goosebumps oh my that you just went there and i am painting it yeah and i have never been there yeah. So he painted this painting, it's just about most beautiful one. This is a replica or there's a copy of it because my son has original. That's, he that's, just does not want to part amazing. with it. Hey, you know what? We could spend all day that's right. looking at all these rooms, but I want to make sure our viewers get to know about this spectacular sure. museum. So what, what's the address? Where are we in Franklin? We I know we're right the, along the river. Yeah, it's the Franklin uh downtown okay when you look outside you enjoy the water it's it's that, very serene and this yeah. build was built in 18 50 60 something yeah. like that yeah. and uh, it has the most beautiful culture all every room has a fireplace and has a ambient it's about close to i think 6500 square feet now, now the museum is open from during the week monday through yeah. friday from yeah. nine until nine up to five nine till five, five. Now, I'm going to take you out of this just for a second because you also support the arts in another way, the Mason uh, Theater Group, correct? That's right, yes. Uh, and that's right right in Lebanon. So if, if you don't want to drive out to Franklin just yet, the Mason uh, Theater, Theater Group yeah. is right on 42. Two. And uh, it's a support. I support yeah. the uh, art theater. Basically, I want to support everything to do with the art. Yeah. So I support the, uh, the, um, the Theater 42 and helping them to expand, make it bigger. It's yeah. on a 40 acres, of land, 20 acres of yeah. land. Wow. Then I also have bought a church and converted that into a harmony center where okay. the people can play. And that's in Franklin, that's yeah, right Franklin, down the road. Yeah. Yeah. I also now started the Academy of Art. Yeah. And um, he, he's doing a great job. Yeah. Tim Langenhorst, so he just and he teaches art classes here. Right, yeah. I, I think Monday here, and Wednesday in the in the academy in the academy. Yeah, okay, so that's an academy wow. that all is set up. Well, we'll here. have to we'll have to get out there and take a sure, look at right. that. Did I miss anything? I know there's lots more that we need oh, to yeah. see, uh, but I, I'll tell you this: this has just been a a, a joy, mm -hmm. man. I, 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 I feel like I've just made a new friend. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Yeah, thank you so much, Ramesh. Yes, Thanks for being on the show. You got to get down here to Franklin. You'll be, you. you'll be. Moved. You are all welcome. Anybody wants to come, just please let us know. We'll make sure you get a chance to see everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Holty Chevrolet always gives you the best. Best price, guaranteed. Best trade-in value. Best selection. Best financing on all new and pre-owned vehicles. Just 20 minutes from Cincinnati or Dayton in Lebanon, Ohio. And you'll love the Pulte price. Since 1954, Hardy's Interiors has been providing quality furnishings for homes in and around Lebanon, Ohio. Today, you'll still find quality antique and vintage furniture along with new Made in America furniture of all styles. At Hardy's, you can create a mix of furniture and accessories that truly reflects your personality, all made to last a lifetime. Designers are welcome and so are you. Hardy's Interiors at 208 and a half Wright Avenue or online at hardysinteriors.com. Hi there. You might wonder what a famous Hollywood celebrity like me is doing reading in the dark. Is this some new sort of Hollywood method acting? No, this is quite real. Did you know that Americans use about four times as much energy per year as the global average? We waste energy left and right despite the fact that the dirty fossil fuels we use to power our energy sources wreak havoc on the natural world and destroys valuable wildlife habitats. 
by reading with my solar powered night vision goggles, I'm saving energy and looking sleek. <laughs> you don't have to sit in the dark like Ed Bagley Jr. to save the world. Fight climate change by speaking up for cleaner, smarter energy, including rooftop solar. Oh, that's way better. Oh. Do your part and find out other world saving tips at betterthaned.org. Bob Holty Chevrolet always gives you the best. Best price, guaranteed. Best trade in value. Best selection. Best financing on all new and pre owned vehicles. Just 20 minutes from Cincinnati or Dayton in Lebanon, Ohio. And you'll love the Pulte price. Welcome back. It's time now for the community calendar. Bob Henn, the author of Wildflowers of Ohio, will present a program on the wildflowers of Warren County at the Otterbein Nature Series on Monday, April 22nd, starting at 1 p.m. Everyone is invited to come to the Philippi Meeting Room on the Otterbein campus on Route 741 in Lebanon to hear Bob's wonderful stories about Ohio's native plants. The program is free and open to the public. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at Caesar Creek Lake State Park will hold their annual Bio Blitz from 6 p.m. April 26th to 6 p.m. April 27th. During this 24-hour period, park rangers and local experts will be assisted by citizens to identify as many different species as possible within the park. No experience is necessary and children will have the chance to win prizes while learning more about the nature around them. For more information, call the Visitor Center at 513-897-1050. Be sure to stop by the Harmon Museum at 105 South Broadway in Lebanon during the month of April where you can enjoy a special exhibition of glasswork of Valerie Sherwood Rask. For over 25 years, Valerie has been creating stained glass windows, jewelry, and other art pieces in her studio in Argonia, and now you can see some of her most dramatic artwork all in one exhibition. Admission is included with your entrance fee to the museum. For more information, look online at harmonmuseumohio.org or call 513-932-1817. That's our show for this week. We'll be back April 16th with a preview of Lebanon's Arbor Day celebration along with the winners of the Arbor Day poster contest. We'll also have information on an upcoming small business center here in Lebanon and an exciting event coming to the Lebanon Library. You'll be over the moon for that one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>